Alright, so obviously the previous video was completely hopeless. Um, so I decided to you know, do a couple more laps and see if I can make this a little bit more useful for you guys. So I'll start with the optimum line, just like I tried to do the previous time. And there's not really too much of a mystery coming around VIR. I guess the first little hint is that the front straight is a front turn, and essentially if you stay on the inside of it, you're going to cut a little bit of the track. Obviously set up far to the outside for turn one. Um, coming through turn one, there's actually several lines that you can use depending on the traffic. You know, the far inside, the middle lane, and even the third lane are feasible. Um, I think you want to use a little bit more of the outside lane coming into this NASCAR corner. And it's important to get nicely slowed down for this turn here so that way you can set yourself up for a good exit through these lower S's and up into the uphill S's. Alright, so time, time to rest for one second as we're going under the bridge. As you approach the uphill S's, remember you're going to try to straighten these out as much as you can. The best way to do that is just put a wheel on each curve. Sometimes you might need to lift a little bit for the last turn just to make sure the car is settled and be ready for this left-hander that comes really quickly and is blind going down the hill. This is another important braking zone. You need to get slowed down enough so that way you can get onto this back straight in the as clean as way possible and you know, get good speed coming out of the park. They don't want you using the runoff area, but I think everyone does. Um, so feel free to. And if you get a warning about it, and stop doing it. Alright, so another little second to take a break and you know, grab a sip of water. This is going to be a hard uphill braking zone. Get slowed down enough so you don't go flying off the hill off the other side. Keep the car nicely controlled. Coming down this roller coaster section. Again, no mysteries in the line here. It's outside, inside, outside, inside, inside, inside. I think that's the correct number. And then down the front straight slash turn. Gearing wise, again, not a lot of mystery, you know, throughout the lap. Let's get down to third gear through the first corner. I know I did second gear here, but in the real car, it's going to be third gear for sure. I think this line is a little bit better than the previous line. It's going to go get toward the outside. This is going to be a fourth gear corner in real life. With a drop down to third for this turn, as you get nicely slowed down. And then here, it's about us getting as quickly on the throttle as possible and staying there. Because in reality, this is one of the longer full throttle sections of the, of the course. Again, look at these walls next to you. These are uh, as close of a wall as you can get on this track, so if you're going to be making moves through that section, be very deliberate, because if you get tapped, you're going to be you know, paying for some arm code, and also not in the race anymore. That blind corner can be done in 4th or 5th gear, depending on how much speed you're carrying. And coming through Oak Tree, it's going to be a 3rd gear corner, just like one. Go ahead and accelerate quickly and make whatever passes you can make. Take a sip of water and start thinking about this uphill braking zone. You're going to be turning a little bit as you brake just to try to get set up toward the outside. So it's sort of an angled braking. Again, make sure you get slowed down enough so that way you can Get on the throttle nice and early and come careening off the map. Those laps is shaping up to be in the two tens, which is a extremely fast lap. And if we can be running, you know, even five seconds a lap slower than that, we will probably be in very good shape. Okay, so now we're going to jump over to uh, footage from last year, talk about some braking zones. Okay, so here we are, uh, coming down the front stretch. 
we're going to hang out toward the right side of the track. So the braking zone for turn one is can be as as far down as the three, but if you want to be safe, just keep it around the four. Again, it's an endurance race, no sense in flying off into the grass at turn one. So four is nice and comfortable, you know, four and a quarter will be very comfortable. This is just going to be a light tap of the brakes to be able to get the car turned. Again, you'll see that I leave it in fourth gear here, even going around a car. I probably could have downshifted third. Notice how slow I get the car just to be able to hang out onto the left side of the track and be able to get a good run, you know, out of that corner into the lower S's. Very important corner, just the over slow. If you're going to do anything, go slower than, than faster because um, this whole section is where you're going to have a lot of speed. Notice the one wheel on the curbs, again, just to make this straight. And in this situation, I just kept it flat. A hair of braking just to get the car turned in. Again, I'll leave it in fourth gear in this lap and hard on the brakes going up the hill toward Oak Tree. Third gear is plenty sufficient. Use what you can of the road and get them back on the throttle. While we're in a lull here, let's try to remember to uh, remind our drivers to buckle their chin straps just because you look silly on video later on if you don't. So we're coming down the straight, my gloves were wet so I had to dry them off, but breaking point right between the one and the two hundred yard marker will get you slowed down plenty going up that hill. It seems a lot later than it should be, but again, you know, it's an uphill braking zone. And you don't really need to use too much brake coming through this you know, downhill section. Occasionally you might have to touch the touch the brakes if you're around a car, but most of the time it's just a matter of lifting and keeping the car settled. If you keep the car in control, you'll be in good shape that whole that whole section. Alright, so that's it for the real life section. Let's go back to the sim and see what we can figure out. So we're at the approach to turn in on turn one, and as far as passing goes, essentially any line will work. If you're faster than the next guy, um, you can be on the inside, the outside, or the far outside of them. There's three useful lines around this corner because there's so much space in the exit of turn one. So coming out of turn one and through turn two, essentially you can pass anywhere again. Same with approaching NASCAR, you can go around the outside of people. Um, there is extra runoff for you. Okay, so we're looking at turn four, um, technically turn four A. And turn four A, if you get slowed down enough, you know, even if you're behind someone, um, and you can hug the left side of the track coming out of the corner, you're going to be in better shape to make the pass on the inside coming through turn B, which is the absolute next right-hander. And if you're on the inside of them, then you own, you know, the lower S's or the turn 5 complex. So, I, I said it before, but it's extremely important to get slowed down enough for you know, the first part of turn 4A. Now making a pass through these S's is pretty tricky. It can be done if you have faith in someone. And even this straightaway, you need to be deliberate with the passes because those walls that I'm looking at are extremely close and they are the closest on the track. Going through the uphill S's passing is pretty hard. Um, you're better off just taking the safe route. And coming through here passing can be done, but again, be safe. The braking zone in turn 11, very useful place for passing. You can outbreak people on the inside and on the outside. And if you're even with them, you know, either on the inside or the outside, you can use the oak tree corner to either speed past them around the outside or undercut them going you know, around the inside. Um, going through the back straight, obviously, with no thought involved if you're faster and you're faster. Just don't do any reckless stuff from you know, trying to pass in the grass and 
you know, going full wide, it's a long race, so be safe. The uphill braking zone into the roller coaster again. It will work on the inside and it will work on the outside. A lot of people like to over brake for this corner uh, and actually hug toward the right side simply because you know, they're anticipating the right turn. So going around the outside can actually work quite a bit. And then coming through the roller coaster and hog pen section, um, I've gotten spun out there once. I don't know if I'll do too much passing unless someone is there that I know that can won't hit me. So, so far we've been talking about the track during the day, but half the race happens at night. Um, so I think we should run through the night practice one time. So obviously at night time this whole situation is completely different. And you're losing you know, all the visual references like I said before. There's no good way to practice this unless you're practicing it. Um, so you're going to have to know the track and then just essentially make a mental picture of how long each straightaway is and when you're going to turn it. Now it's, nowhere, it's not going to be nowhere near as precise as it was you know, in the daytime and you have every possible reference. Um, but at the same time, if you spend the time putting work into this, you're going to be able to you know, at least be better than, than the next guy. So I'm not going to try to make a, a guide through this nighttime section, but it's just a representative example of what to expect. The one benefit that you have is that when there's other cars on on track, you know they're they're lighting part of the road for you. So it's not near as drastic as as this whole situation looks like, but it's still not fun. Uh, well, actually, I'll rephrase that. It's fun, but it, it is very tricky. So, this is what it looks like. It's not a grossly inaccurate representation, other than the fact that you're missing the lights from other cars, but sometimes those cars are heading off into the dirt, so you can't trust them all that much anyways. I will remind you that you can race with other cars, you know, in a setto, and they'll do some of the similar lighting that, that you would get from from, uh, you know, from real life competitors. So again, uh, you're not gonna be good at this unless you put in the work for it. It's just that simple. And you're not gonna be good at it unless you know the track well first. All right, so jumping back into regular uh, daytime. While you're practicing, you know, I want you guys to keep remembering that, that you're not trying to set hot laps and just practice the optimum line because there are very few opportunities to have a clean line during any one stint. Um, so practice smart and you know, practice intelligently. What I always do is is just do um, five hot laps you know, with the optimum line, and then I'll run five laps sort of around the outside of the track. So the outside of every corner, it's exceedingly slow compared to running your hot laps. And then I'll do the same with the inside of every corner. Then I'll do the right side of the track the whole way around. And then I'll do the left side of the track all the way around. And it's just a, you know, it's just a matter to make your brain very intuitively know the breaking points um, for each different line that you, you could possibly take. And not only that, know the different speed that you're going around because when you're going around you know let's say you go around the inside of three different corners you can break way later because your entrance speed is way slower and the only way you're going to get to know you know, any of this stuff is just by by practicing so and you know i think learning the track and learning the good line is by all means a, a good way to learn the track um, but it's not going to make you fast during the race because that line's not going to be available to you the vast majority of the time. Uh, and if you can know the you know the, the lines that everybody else doesn't know, or at least know them better than the next guy, then it's going to give you the advantage in, in passing and uh, defending your position. So anyways, hope this helps. Um, sorry about the sound on the first video. I think I've got my 
mic situation sorted out at least a little bit, but um, we'll, we'll see because my computer is on its last legs, I think, or at least some key component. Anyways, not important. Uh, not a long time to go, so let's get yeah, let's put in some practice, and I'll, uh, I'll see you guys in a couple weeks.